This video is a quick summary of the final preparation that you need to be doing in the lead up to your GCSE Biology Paper 1. For most people, this is one of their very first exams. So you really want it to go well, not just because of this exam, but because that's going to put you in a really positive frame of mind for the rest of the exam season. Hopefully you're close to completing your revision and you've had time to watch my full paper summary with all the topics that are going to be in this paper and also work through the recall questions. So now let's think about exam day and what you can do that morning and also in the first five minutes of the exam to make sure that you do the absolute best that you can do. On the morning of your exams, you want to be as calm as possible and not rushing around and you want to take control of everything that you can. One thing that it's really easy for you to get right is to make sure that you've got all of your equipment before the exam starts. If you've already taken some past papers or looked at the papers that are on the exam board website, you'll know that it says that you need a black pen, a ruler and a calculator. The black pen is important because unlike your mock exams, these aren't going to be marked face to face by somebody holding onto your paper. They're going to be scanned in and black ink is much better at scanning. The ruler is important because on biology paper one, you're likely to have questions that ask you about magnification. And for these, you may need to measure things that are actually on your exam paper. So a protractor or a straight edge isn't really good enough. You do need an actual ruler. You're also going to need a scientific calculator. And a lot of people forget that they're going to need this for biology because they think that's more for the chemistry and the physics. But actually 10% of the marks on this paper are for GCSE math skills. So it's important that you have a calculator and that you know how to use it. If you've managed to make it into school and you've forgotten one of these things, go find one of your science teachers or even your maths teacher before the exam starts because they will be able to lend you stuff. It's also a good idea to check that your calculator is in the right mode and that nothing is strange has happened and that it's giving you sensible answers. So just do a quick few sums before the exam starts so that you're sure that everything's working properly. Now, in the GCC science papers, you're given one minute per mark plus an additional five minutes. And that means that you've got a little bit of breathing room, a bit of time to look through the paper and see which questions have come up and also some time to write down a few key facts before you even look at those questions. It's also really useful to do this. Just have some key facts in your head to write down because it's a really good way of feeling like you're in control of the situation and stopping you from panicking at the start of the exam. The best way to do this is if before the exam starts, maybe a couple of days in advance, you've thought of five particular key facts that you are going to write down that are particular pertinent to this paper. Now, unlike chemistry, where you get the periodic table and physics, where you get an equation sheet, in GCSE Biology, you're not going to get a handy extra sheet of paper for writing these notes on. But there's very likely to be some blank space in the exam paper that you can use. Don't worry about the fact that any blank pages between questions say don't write on this. That's just to remind you that anything you write there won't be seen as your examiner, because sometimes if people run out of space, they think that it's OK to write in that space and they don't realise that their paper is going to be scanned. But it's absolutely fine if you want to use those pages or any other white space to just scribble down a few things. Now, I'm going to give you some ideas here and there's going to be far more than five of them, but Ideally, you want to pick just a few things that you're going to be saying to yourself over and over in your head as you walk into the exam. One really good topic to focus in on for this kind of thing are the working scientifically skills, because they're common to all six papers and also because a lot of people forget to revise them thoroughly because they're really focusing on the biology content or the chemistry content. So working scientifically could be things like the names of the variables. So you modify your independent variable and in a graph that goes on the X axis. And then after you've modified or changed that independent variable, you look at your dependent variable and you record what has happened to it. And that would go on the Y axis of a graph. Then we've also got our control variables. And I always say to classes that I teach that I'm a control freak. And that means that I like everything to stay the same. So I always have the same seating plan. I always have the same lilac colored PowerPoint. And so your control variables are the things that you are forcing to be exactly the same in every single investigation. Remember though, it has to be something that you are actively doing something to. So for instance, in an investigation where you did everything at room temperature, that wouldn't count as a control variable. Whereas if you did everything in a water bath to keep it at exactly 30 degrees, that would be a control variable. 
Another thing that's quite useful for this paper is these conversions between the different units. So there are a thousand milligrams in a gram, a thousand micrograms in a milligram, and a thousand nanograms in a microgram. And those conversions work whatever the base unit is. So it's also true that there are a thousand millimeters in a meter or a thousand milliliters in a liter. Command words are really important, so you might want a reminder that if a question says to describe, you need to say, what do you see? So, for instance, what is happening on a graph? Whereas explain means you need to tell us why it's happening. And if you get a question which asks you to evaluate, you need to compare both sides of the evidence and then you must write a conclusion. There is one common mark scheme for all of the evaluate questions in GCSE Science, and it always says that to get into the level three and to get six marks, you need to have a strongly justified conclusion. So you need to say which option is best and back it up with evidence. Now, as well as those working scientifically things, you might want to include some facts from the actual content for this paper. So there are four topics we've got to cover, cells, organisation, infection and bioenergetics. For cells, we've obviously got microscopy, so you might want that little triangle of I am, so the image size, the actual size and the magnification, if you're someone who likes using triangles. You might also want a reminder that magnification is about how much larger an image is than the actual object, whereas resolution is the smallest detectable difference. And both of those things are better using an electron microscope than a light microscope. You might want a reminder that in diffusion, things move from where there's a high concentration to where there's a low concentration of particles. Of course, the cells topic does contain a required practical, and you know that the required practicals are more likely to come up than any of the rest of the content. So you might want to remind yourself that after you've looked at those little chips of vegetable, whether they're potato or carrot or whatever, and they've been in the different solutions, you would calculate a mass change for each one, and you would compare that to the concentration. You'd get some data that look a little bit like this and you would do a line of best fit through them. And this is a good opportunity to remind yourself that contrary to what they say in GCSE maths, a line of best fit can curve if that's what your data does. And on this graph, the concentration inside the cells is going to be the point where this line of best fit crosses your X axis. So this point here, because what that tells me is that my vegetable chips didn't change mass. And that's because overall no osmosis was happening. Now, you might also need to think about your cell division and you might need to remind yourself that on paper one, we're only going to encounter mitosis and you might need to know which one mitosis is. So one of my year 10s many years ago came up with mitosis happens in the toes and toes are not sexy. So mitosis is the one that happens in your body cells and it doesn't produce gametes because it's not sexy. It just is for growth and for repair. And remember, mitosis is one of those very rare words where it does have to be spelled perfectly because we need to know that you're not mixing it up with meiosis. In the organisation topic, you might want a reminder that cells are the smallest living thing that there is. And these are put together to make up tissues that are all made of the same kind of cell. And then tissues are put together with different tissues to make organs and organs are put together to make organ systems. There are two required practicals in the organisation topic, so you might need to remind yourself that when you're using Benedict's solution to look for sugars, it's really important that you say you're heating it, not just warming it, because it does need to be really quite hot, sort of 70 degrees or so in order for the test to work, um, or a reminder that the iodine test is for starch. And then that second required practical is all about finding the optimum conditions for an enzyme. Um, so we tend to use amylase and the amylase is breaking down starch and the pH where um, it's the optimum pH is going to be the one where the amylase can break down the starch fastest and therefore the iodine stays that orangey brown colour rather than going blue black. In the infection topic, a really common thing that people forget is that antibiotics don't kill viruses. So that's why the doctor won't give you antibiotics if you have a cold. You might want the list of the different diseases that you're supposed to know which pathogens cause them. So salmonella and gonorrhea are caused by bacterial infections. HIV, TMV and measles are viral infections. Rose black spot is a fungal infection and malaria is caused by a protist. And also vaccination is a really common one that people forget the details of. So reminding yourself that after you've been vaccinated, you produce far more of the specific antibody, antibody when you um, meet the pathogen again sort of in the wild. 
um, you produce those antibodies much faster and also they persist in your bloodstream for longer. And the reason that all this happens is because you keep special white blood cells called memory cells in your bloodstream and they're able to produce these. And then finally, we have the bioenergetics topic, which is the photosynthesis and respiration topic. So you might want to write down the symbol equations because that's a really common thing that people struggle with. Maybe a little reminder that every time you're talking about photosynthesis, it has to be light. It can't just be the sun. And then for respiration, it tends to be exercise that people fall down on because they think it's a really easy topic. So they forget to talk about the fact that when you're exercising, your muscles need more energy. So therefore you do more respiration. And in order to do aerobic respiration, you need glucose and oxygen. So therefore your heart beats faster in order to move the glucose and oxygen around your bloodstream and supply those to the cells so that they can carry on respiring. You're then going to need to think, what are the five of these facts that are going to be most important for me to remember? So this is way too much on this page for you to write down, but you need to come up with a few key things that you're going to keep in your head going into the exam so that at the start, when everyone else is having a little bit of a panic, you're just calmly writing down something that you've rehearsed and planned and know all about. Once you've spent maybe a minute writing down your five key facts, you're ready to have a quick look through the paper and see which topics have come up. In particular, you're looking for any extended response questions. So these are the longer four to six mark questions, which are level marked rather than marked, giving you one mark for each correct thing that you've said. There's always going to be at least one of these because there's always one common extended response question which features on the foundation paper and the higher paper. So if you're sitting foundation, this will be near the back. And if you're sitting higher, it will be near the front. It's a good idea to find this early on so that you can be thinking about it in the back of your head while you're answering the other questions. Remember, for these extended response questions, you need to lay out your answer in a logical fashion, but you don't need to write in full sentences. It's absolutely fine if you want to use bullet points or a table. So I can read through this question and then as I'm answering other questions, things might pop into my head and I can make myself a little plan. So for instance, I might be answering a completely different question and I remember that I'm going to need to write something about the villi. And then I can just turn back to where I was and carry on. And a little bit later, it might occur to me that I need to write something about the blood supply. And I might remember that in the small intestine, there are lots of small capillaries. And then I go and I answer another question and it occurs to me that I might want to say what these substances are that are being um, absorbed in the small intestine. And I might remember that one of those is going to be glucose. And so what this means is that by the time I get to question seven and I'm ready to start tackling this, I'm not just faced with a blank sheet of paper. I've actually already got a few ideas for things I want to write, and that's going to make it far less intimidating. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you're now feeling slightly better prepared and like you've got a slightly better strategy for tackling GCC Biology Paper 1. Good luck with your revision. And if you have found this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Biology videos coming soon.